Welcome back to another animation analysis and today I'm going to take a look at the movie Soul. And unlike the trailer where you just look at a couple of sequences and shots that you don't choose, I looked at the movie and picked out a few sequences and it's it's a tough thing to pick because they're all so good. It's kind of hard. You might as well just say watch the whole movie Soul. But since I'm not going to go through the whole movie and that will be a problem probably copyright as well, I'm just going to pick a few sequences. And this was actually just a shot and what I love about this one is as we do lip syncing or pantomime, we always kind of tempted to act out words. And it's sometimes a bit easier and a bit more the cliche thing to do. But what I like about this is that it's not really doing that. It's actually, it's a nice little subtext thing here where she goes, all right, you got your full job here and welcome to, you know, to the teacher family and so on full time. And what I love is this. It's in a way she's saying, all right, well, you're here with us now all the time. He's not really into this. And to him, it's more of a handcuff, a shackle. It's like, ah, this is not really what I, what I want to do, but I'm kind of trapped here. And I love that this grabbing is kind of re-emphasized. I mean, that's how I read into this, but it's kind of re-emphasizing that, that notion of you're with us here. This is the handcuff. You're trapped with us here now and not really fulfilling the dream. But that's just a nice little bit of a uh, kind of a, an acting moment where think about what your character is saying and what could you do that is not really acting out words but at the same time it is kind of you know what I mean like it's a bit of a, a subtext or a kind of a, a little hint at something something just a bit more subtle potentially I don't know I really like this moment I don't know if I am right but this is what I'm taking from this and I like it this I picked just because of the background character because you would think that well you know whoever has to animate this and potentially this character maybe this is the background animator or the animator has to do all three or you know more characters in there but if you watch this there's some great stuff in there a lot of really nice hand poses really nice character designs the whole thing i mean the whole movie just looks beautiful like lots of great characters but come on i'm going to switch to a different tool and i'm going to say look at her ready let's go back let's play this again look at her Everybody's excited. She goes, come on, come on. It's so good. I really, really like this. So this is just as a reminder that if you have a shot and you are in charge of the whole thing, don't skimp on background characters. This is something where you can try out things, a broader move, but I love the shoulder animation. It just has such personality in this. It's a really, really great moment. It's just that to me is just, I don't know, it's just better than everything else in the shot. I love that moment. You can see that little lean down with that arm and then whoa coming back up with the shoulders it's just a great moment i picked this one too just because sometimes you have a lip sync right it could be a two-person lip sync a one-person lip sync where the other person is listening whatever and that's it now as you, if you watch my channel you know i like sets and props and all kinds of stuff but i also like adding other characters and you can do stuff with them they can be there to listen to the main character kind of their reaction will re-emphasize what they're saying it could be a lot of contrast all kind of stuff it's such great material and opportunity to push things further and this is a great thing where she has the needles here and watch her right she puts this in oh just a bit of a painful look love that face too and then she goes again they're listening oh, these i mean that whole sequence all those characters are so well done i love it but as she continues on you know scrub forward here she continues and then grabs the second piece here ready these poses too here again i'm that whole movie you just go frame by frame for the whole movie but anyway i'm going to pick out this moment where she does this again and she's going to pick it uh, but not really and now we're waiting we're waiting and as she's asking him what are you going to do again great facial expression nice little curve there you can see her going come on say yes so she doesn't want to get pricked here again again for you to think about as you have a moment <laughs> that little look, look beep that's that one and then comes a second one so if you have a scene maybe it doesn't have to be human this could be a creature i mean this movie we have a cat but if you have anything you could add a cat a dog or she's just holding something or whatever it is right this could be feeding a fish whatever and maybe she's distracted as she's talking about something and there's more fish food coming in and the fish keeps eating more fish maybe they just grow way too fast not in real time to me this is just a great opportunity where you have extra material extra characters pets humans whatever you have just to kind of push that scene a bit further and also add a bit of a comedic um, element to this and i thought this was really, really cute this moment to me is purely animation just because it's just it's just awesome i you watch this and obviously you watch the whole movie there's great stuff in it but every now and then there will be a scene that just stands out look at that wall ready i'm just gonna play this love the weight love the little weight shifts i love what that hand is doing 
there's just such a such a i know there's such a personality you can see the hand on the hip there it's such a good walk and then once you get to this you can clearly see also that the character besides talking is also listening to what's going on i'm not going to play the audio and you don't have to as you can see here right there he just heard something reaction to that and i love that little dip down with the head moving over for that walk and then you can see again the thought the lifting of the, of the head right the whole body straightens for the interest like oh i heard something and then oh man and then the, i love that love how the character goes down looks over over there again for contrast right you got that posture that's tall go down to something lower and then move over into this and there's much more excitement the hand comes in i also love the camera you can see this here the camera is nicely framed because whatever he is saying the mom is listening right let's go back here so as he's talking you can always kind of pay attention to the mom doesn't want to upstage the whole scene right she's just kind of listening because you know moms are always listening so he has this moment it's kind of a chit chat and now he's going to get excited and the content of the conversation is going to change. So then pay attention to the mom. So anyway, it goes back in there. The camera's late. I like that he breaks frame. Camera just goes a bit higher. Camera adjusts again. And again, the contrast. Because if you have your character, all you do is stand in one place. Could be boring. Same height. Just visually, the contrast. There's nothing going on. But in this, you got A, he has depth, right? Comes from far away, closer to the camera. Changes around. Tall to lower. More excitement, the rhythm changes, goes even taller there. It's great. And now that he has that moment, oh man, and everything. Look at that. Now she's listening. And he knows that. Look at that. He knows it. Goes over. And I want that little moment before he does, right? He's got the excitement, the wide eyes. And then before he looks over there, check out, check out the frame by frame, that widening, because he knows mom is listening. So the eyes, they lead over. Then we go over there. And then he turns around and you can see as he keeps on talking, kind of whispering, but you can tell, I mean, if you listen to the audio, he says something very important of what he's going to do. And then look at the mom. Oh, and that, look at that. It's not just that. It's like, this makes no sense. And we all do this, right? I do this when I animate and have whatever. Imagine there's a head controller, there's an arm controller, and I kind of manipulate maybe fingers. Maybe there's like a phone controller. I would physically, this sounds really stupid, but I would lean over. And, I, you know, in order to see more of maybe the ear control, it makes no sense on a computer screen. But I don't know. Sometimes you just do weird things. Same for her. She listens, hears this, but then the straightening, she's like as if she wanted to see more, maybe read the lips. Makes no sense. She can't. But it's just something for you to think about in terms of, well, I'm interested. It's not just the head turn, but no, I'm just going to straighten the whole body, move back to really be more interested and also prompts her to kind of stop and look. Actually, if you can see this, is a slight eyebrow change there. Maybe. Well, I'm reading too much into this. But again, this whole moment, this is also a one really long shot. So watch at this. Look, I'm going to uninterrupt to play this. The walk is fantastic. The weight, adding to the personality is great. Love that little hold, little shake, then come back, then hold, and then down. More excitement. That's great. That little hop up there, little head accents. Look over there, and then come back. A little bit more of a whisper and we ooh, cut that was long so whoever animated this holy moly it's just when you keep watching those things it just gets so super pumped this has nothing to do with animation even though this is cute i like the camera here because you can see this here as it switches to a bit more of a, a panicky moment how we are slightly floaty handheldy there's another sequence later on within new york that's really really cool but i like how we follow and there's a little, little bit of a bob. You can kind of see how these elements. There's not much to, to look at besides this in terms of grounding yourself. There's nothing else here. But you can still sense, obviously, you can see it with, with the creatures here, how they go up and down. Or creatures. I call them creatures because they're not quite humans right there. And then just that. I love this. How we are just kind of. It's almost like claustrophobic where it, just, it adds to the panic. We're close by. There's a little out, there, out of focus moment here. And just that little handheld feel. All of this. Again, not only really looking at the character animation, even though it's really good. I really like that camera move. Just wanted to throw that in there. Not that it was a camera move. It was like multiple camera motion pieces. But this one I'm going to pick out just because anything with them is just insanity. There's nothing really that I want to pick out separately because everything is just insane. I think I watched a little making up for someone saying that the rigs were just insane. And then at the end, just a group of people were just responsible for the whole characters. But I just love the... The negative space it implies that there's an opening, but you can see then how this changes. And the same thing when, when the character blinks, 
when you can see, can see it now, but then this goes down, it kind of opens up this, and then the transformation of everything <laughs> then grabs the character here. Look at this. I just love this. The moment it overlaps, it just creates the gap, but then it feels like it's a fold. Absolutely insane. And then once you think, well, you know, this could just be a flat rig and blah, 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 blah. I mean, I don't even know how you would animate this. The character turns around. Also love this here. Look at that. Creates openings with little soles here and then it turns and look at how that face changes like what is going on nose here nose here and then it switches over but it's still working with the nose here then it's looking back at us i don't know this just breaks my brain again just anything just watch the movie anything with these type of characters it's just insanity that's that's all i can say i can't go more into this because it just breaks my brain Going back to these ones, though, I love this moment because of contrast, where 22 realizes, ah, okay, 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 I love that, where you have just the timing of it, the look, and you can also see a slight, you know, it's a bit smaller, a bit bigger, you got the opening towards the character, it's asymmetry, it's even like a simple character, you still have asymmetry in all of this, and then you got the timing, when you have the slight closing, you got the relaxing of the brow as well as it goes over, opens up, and then just as we hit this, you got the smiles, you got the eyelids here. All this pushes up into a close. And look at the timing of the up, uh, bounce, bounce. Love that offset in the hands, poop, poop, like that. And then this, just the contrast of this and then over. Quick, quick, quick. Into just that slow raise up and look. And then I love this here. I love that. When you have that quick, 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 stop into this. That's just such a great contrast moment of. A, I just love head accents. It just works really well with the audio. Great, clear mouth shapes as well. Really appealing lines here, nothing too complicated. But look at look at the change from the quick head darts into bang. It works really well. But even then, and this is something that I emphasize always with the students, that even when you have just a hole or just a simple thing, there's not a huge amount of movement in the jaw or the lips. But look at, after we hit this, how much the head moves over. Beep, beep. See that? There's still movement. There's still a moment of hold and another little slight lean there. It still works. So do not just hold everything. I say do not hold. Obviously, it all depends on the style and the action. But I think head accents are just criminally underused. And I would implore all of you students, if you watch this, to think about that. This is basically a ginormous head with some floaty stuff underneath. So it's like, I love, that's why I love those characters. Because it's a great example of, like, less is more. It's simple, but you still have a really nice feel to it of that lean back look at the body how it goes up bounce 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 and you can just feel the weight in this and then it leans over ding, 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 more bounciness hold and then da, 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 and then bang. these are all technical sounds but it's just a really really great moment again of movement the timing of it the texture of the timing as it changes and then the change where you use depth where it's not you know super small super big but still it uses more of the structure of the set, so it's just stuck in one environment. It's just overall just a really nice shot. And then sticking with this character, and again, it's for timing. You can see it, well, try this out. And I love the, just look at the rhythm and the timing of the character moving over and then back. And then because everything is kind of slow, you have every now a moment of quick hold. I love this. This is like one frame. Look at this. One, two, look at that. And then straight into this, just a little arm disappears, and then back into that. And then you want some more craziness, just for contrast. And then back into normal. And I, I love this when you got the head not moving. All of these are so many quick moments. It's also really cute if you pay attention to how those hands are structured, like mittens, right? But then suddenly you have fingers. <laughs> That's great. It's just overall, again, a really great display of contrast and timing where you just got to have a certain rhythm for the scene it's slow it's fast also just craziness of the face it's really cartoony with some really awesome quick hand poses arm poses where everything is really really big speaking of big i can hear my dog in the background i hope you can't hear it apologize if there's some noise but such a great shot great character just really nice contrast between something slow and something fast it's really really neat now switching to this moment Kind of fast forward a little bit. There's a lot of really great moments. And, I, you know, I, I pointed out some bigger moments too. But some of the things just I love. I love the more quiet moments and the more subtle moments. So look at when he or she, depending on if it's a spoiler. But 
when she says, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love this. Now, you can, there are some other shots in here, and I've shown one before where it's, you know, it's broader, really complex movement. It's really interesting to watch. But I love this. The change of, well, let me think about this, looking over. Then I'm gonna frame through this. You can see eyes go up, change the brows, and then it's a, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but look at the complexity of this. There's a little bit of a, uh huh, uh huh, in there and there. This goes up down as well with the head. And then a slight change. You can see a slight adjustment in the rotation of the head, just a little bit here. And then opening of the mouth with another nod and then into this. Now watch this in real time. I'm go back and just play this. And you have, uh, mm, mm, uh, I love this. I know this to me, just like that previous shot with the walk that was really, really complex, right? Let's go back and reopen this. This is really complicated and difficult to do. You have the walks, the weights, everything. This is really difficult and really, really long shot. I mean, absolutely insane shot. I put this at the same level. I know this is ridiculous because it's from a, a complexity point of view. In terms of mechanics, clearly not the same. But moments like these, when you just have a little bit of a mm -hmm, and then that change, I don't know. This is to me the same level. I just love it. Like level as in how much I love the detail and just a little, little form of contrast for that. It's just so good. Now, next up is this, and I picked this just because, hey, you know, physicality is really fun to watch, but I think this is something that is criminally underused in terms of what students choose to pick in their, in their work, meaning it's usually humans and not really creatures. I'm gonna actually have a, a do a lecture about why you should have more creatures in your, in your demo reel or just shots in general. But it's, look at the cat when the cat comes out, ready? A couple steps here and then that little, the slides in there, and I love that little drop and then the slide and then the fall on the side here. Ready? That is just so great. Also, less here because character's probably sweaty, nervous. That on this surface, there wouldn't be any sliding and less sliding with the shoes. But it's a little bit of here, and I love that too, how it at that angle. It's just great. Also, if you watch some of the close-ups, there's some great squash and stretch. Actually, especially squashing when and the, the shoe lands here, not in this one, but in the, there's a different close-up, but it's some really great shoe detail animation. But anyway, what I'm pointing at is that think about the surface of where your characters are. Is this something slidey where, you know, some elements are more sticky, some are more sliding around. This could be hardwood floor, this could be a carpet, this could be, as I always say, this could be sand where you go in a bit more or deep snow, whatever it is. I think there's so much fun you could have with surface property and how characters interact especially when characters are different you can really highlight how one character potentially has more trouble than the other if you think lord of the rings you got snow everybody has to wade through thick snow and you got legolas that kind of hops with he's all light over the snow that type of stuff to me is just really really fun to animate besides you know this is really really great but it's just a missed opportunity to show off more of your skills can i show off that this surface is slippery or soft or deep squishy you know swampy stuff that to me is just one more thing where i go i can show character pantomime i can show body mechanics i can even show creature stuff and at the same time look at this i can show well this is soft and this is slippery and you can have some cute animation with it it's just a completely criminally underused asset and just another layer to animation where you can say i can do all of this and through my timing and spacing and weight i will convince the viewer that this is a slippery surface might just be me but i love seeing this stuff and i would love to see this more in student work this one i picked just because it's really short it's not really anything to do with animation it's more you know again if you watch my channel you love how a i love sets and i love entrances and this would be a great moment again if you have text your demo reel whatever you know like your name character animated demo reel the 2021 whatever you have and then that's how the reel starts but the thing that cracks me up but this is just why i want to put it in there there are two scenes with the cat this is one there's one later on that's wanted to throw in there just because i love it i love how the legs are hanging and you clearly understand that, oh wait it's the character holding the cat this just made me laugh so hard when i watched the movie but it's just a great moment it's a great unexpected moment so to me if that's your reel and it starts like this right off the bat there's humor it's not just hey, I can animate, but it's also, let me think about the staging and the humor and surprises and things that are unexpected. It's just, I don't know, it's just really, really great. And I wanted to throw that in there. Now, actually continuing with this, 
is this moment. It's just something else that is criminally underused. And I have a, a series that uh, I believe it was called How an Environment Can Make Animation Better. And I want to continue with that and add one more uh, chapter to that just because I love talking about this. But look at this here. Just the fact that this is more quiet, right? And it's has air conditioning is probably cool enough. Then the character comes out and it says, I love this too, how the camera and the lens and the lighting, everything. So you have to adjust to the exposure. And it's kind of, it's almost like it, ma it mirrors what the character is like a blinding thing of, whoa, what is this? And I'm seeing it be clear. But anyway, this, you go out and it's that. The effect of light, right? You can see here as the shadow goes over and then the eye is right off the bat reacts to this. Whoa. And then imagine, it's also played up with the sound, but this whole sequence, let me just play this, where you have massive structures. And this is just, I just really, really, I say play this, but I'm not, I'm not really playing this because I'm just too in love with this. Let me go one by one. because I'm just too overwhelmed by everything here. Students, again, if you're listening, think about your character changing environments, going from one place, right? That was in here, out into another. Play around with light, with there could be really harsh wind and, and it's so windy there's rain and the rain is sideways and it hits the character here right this could be something with snow hail all kinds of stuff and you can play this where again this could also be not super dramatic and there's a lip sync moment your character is pantomiming or talking but still that change going from this environment now out into the open will change the posture there might be asymmetry like whatever's in there it's going to change your acting choices because you still have to continue with your lip sync but then the, and the environment is going to change it. Again, to me, it's just like the surfaces. It's something that's just criminally underused and just adds an extra layer to your animation. In this sequence, though, there's just so much about towering buildings that she has never experienced, right? Then the, the amount of people, and I love it. This really feels like a massively huge world. All the characters, the cars, how the cityscape continues there. You can see the immediate recoil and then bam, all the people coming in the overwhelming crowd look at that and kind of almost get swallowed up by this just little moments of that look at that and then you got you think of looking below will make the, the person bigger but it's just again more towering structures can't get out the noise i love this too with just kind of filming between the people the render quality is also fantastic look at this love just how the light just hits certain elements Love the camera, it's just slightly handheldy. Again, the mob of people. Look at this shot, look at that lens. I love this, that is just, it's so cool. The animation is really great. Even just, if you just look at this purely from the mechanics point of view, the movement of this arm, how it affects the shoulder and then the chest. And because of that move, it affects this arm. Look at this arm when the officer waves, look at this. Right? There's a little bit of movement there. Simple thing, but this is like a, a body mechanics one one here. So great. That shot is just so great. The foreground elements with the car, background with the car, but you got that foreground element that almost serves as a cut, a wipe. It's almost like that color is matching almost. That kind of bridges that cut in a way. I'm reading way too much into this. But I just absolutely love this. Look at that render. Just the craziness. It's just, it's so cool. But within the sequence, it's really neat how it just emphasizes the chaos, the amount of people. Look at this. Also, the different character designs, costumes, they bump into each other. I know this is this has more or less of an analysis, but me just going, holy moly, I love this. But this is just insane. Probably one animator, and then this is what crowds. <laughs> I would love. Hey, in turn, this is your shot to <laughs> all of these characters. You got three days. Let's go. But just in general, again, just to go back, think about, look at that. Sorry, I just didn't even notice this. You go frame by frame on some of these squash and stretch. Look at that cat just scratched this guy for the first time. Anyway, let's go back. So think about this. Think about your character going from one environment, beautiful lighting, into another environment. And again, the contrast of this. What does that mean when your character goes in from something quiet and cool into something potentially really loud and hot, right? And you could choose whatever you want to do. This could be going from a storm outside to finally inside where it's dry. But I think if you have a pantomime piece or a lip sync piece and you add this element to it, it's going to completely change the posture, the reactions, the look, the gestures. And I think it's going to just take your shot out of the realm of the expected, if that makes sense, right? You have all those 
uh, external elements that will force the character to behave differently. Right? With that, either crowds or whatever you have. And I think just, again, makes your shot more interesting, more original. I'm saying all this also, be careful. I mean, this is also extremely difficult to do. There's a lot of work with all of this. I'm not saying that as a student, you should do something where a character is here and then you have to animate, you know, 10 more characters. This is obviously more advanced, but you can keep this simple where it's just a door, door opens and you can do some geometry streaks for rain and the character comes in. I'm going to do all fancy color stuff where your character has shoulders up. The head is here. Maybe the, the, uh, there's a hat and the character is going, oh, this is really, you know, rainy and windy. And then close the door and then goes from a, you know, hunched over uh, to ah, shoulders down, head up. Oh, this is nice. It's dry. I don't have to worry about the weather anymore. That's all there is, right? I'm not saying you have to add all the craziness, but think about as your character goes from one element to the other, how that is going to change the posture, the body language, everything. And to me, this again, this is just untapped material that's just so good to animate. I just want to stop this and just animate myself. This is actually right after. And I wanted to show this because then we're back into head accents, kind of. I mean, you can see the face, obviously. There's just many, many elements Again, that is absolutely love in the shot. You got a, the pose is great. All the expressions, all that is great. But I love the little quick, like, no, 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 no. And then this, I love the point and legs, the slidiness. I love how the character slides over, but then comes back for that extra emphasis there. With that, I love that little, nah, and then over. And then... You would think that, well, I can't see the face. I'm just going to, you know, leave it at that. But the character is still mad. They're still talking. Look at shoulders and head. Ready? And you can see that little wiggle with the shoulders. And then the head, a little move, a little squeeze there. With a little bit of an extra accent. You can see the tightening the hands as well, finger poses. Just that. It's just such a great shot. It doesn't always have to be crazy physical. That moment and that with the extra little accents that it's just so good again i have no idea who did this but whoever did this I, I can only applaud it's just i love the shot love the idea slipperiness and this goes back to anybody watching especially students do not forget head accents obviously especially if you can't see the mouth but whenever imagine there is a face actually let me go back to where you can see the face so when i go back to this and this is not you know the best example just because it's an extra emphasis on purpose but maybe it's a good exaggerated example of imagine your jaw goes down during whatever lip sync do not forget that as you bring the jaw down it is going to stretch the face it's going to bring down the nostrils it's going to probably elongate the nose a little bit but it's also going to have a slight head rotation down sometimes it's it's bigger i mean this is an obvious big accent and sometimes it's more subtle, but I would just try to not just have whatever body animation you have and then kind of, I always say kind of, it feels like a copy paste lip sync where this is just like a separate piece. Imagine you just animated the mouth separately and just kind of attach it, constrain it to the, to the face and then that's it. Just do not forget that the moment you have jaw animation, it is going to influence everything around it, a skin wise, structure wise, muscle wise, but also the head, just kind of, if anybody, uh, any student watch this, if you have my class, you know that's what I'm going to talk about. Now, we go from someone crouched to an absolutely insane body shot. And it's, to be honest, there's not much I can say about this, except who did this, how did they come up with this, and how did they do this? Because it's just, it's just insane. I love everything. It's the extra emphasis in the dialogue. I'm not going to play the audio, but it's just that great moment of that love this i mean again i can't just say this is great just because it already starts <laughs> so good love those finger poses but the body motion is just great and there's all that complexity and all of this while delivering a dialogue or monologue at this point right but the best part is at the end after all of this is this just break it it just breaks my brain you have all this complexity and so many great poses and at the very end Whoever did this comes up with a moment of ready, that ready. Hold on. Here it is. The holding and then the snapping of the fingers and then the hips. I mean, I, I don't understand. Every now and then I see animation where, okay, what happened? I know this is awesome. But what, what just happened? How did they just do this? And I can frame through this and I don't understand. <laughs> 
It's insane. I'm gonna play this again. I don't know who did this, but I can only fall on my knees and applaud and worship the insanity and awesomeness of this moment. I mean, pff, holy macro. There's just, if there's ever a shot where you want to start your reel with, <laughs> it's so well done. Anyway, I mean, I, again, I just, there's so much about beautiful finger poses, the grouping of the fingers, a really expressive, you know, skinny fingers in there where you can play with so much, but the looseness of the hips while you stabilize the chest, but not really, it's not completely locked. You know what I mean? It's not like you see any type of constraints. Absolutely insane from, from beginning to the end. Again, it's just, it's just bravo, bravo, whoever did this. It's, it's just insanity. Now I was talking about that one cat shot that made me laugh. And here's the second one that <laughs> that's all, that's it. I, there's not much for me to say. I just wanted to bring that in there. I mean, you can technically look at it and you got your visual squash, stretch, hold, stretchiness. I love this, how, how much those arms extend and then as they stop extending, because there's only so much they can do, it will <laughs> force that little swing over, and then extend a bit some more, and then it will swing over here. I mean, just that physically is really well done. It's a really nice weight and a bounciness, but this just made me laugh, and it makes me laugh every time. Winding of eyes and just the, the casual, like not really understanding what's back there, closing of this with the cat. Let's watch this again. I don't know who came up with this, but... I guess whenever someone falls, I'm just like a child. Anybody falling or getting slapped in the head, it makes me laugh. And this is just one of the best moments. I love it. This one I wanted to include, this has nothing to do with animation, but I love the interaction with the skin. And look at the render. This is purely a render appreciation post. Look at the lighting and look at this. And I know we're in a, in a feature animation movie is supposed to be all stylized and cartoony, but there's always a bit of a mix nowadays where you have an insane amount of realism in the textures. I mean, this could take this out where this feels just slightly not real, but this could easily be just photo. Look at this. You got a little influence of this on the towel. Look at that render. I mean, look at this. It's just a beautiful render. Again, nothing animation. And then look at this render. Look at that, the squishiness of the skin, the little wetness, the hair, the skin color, the lighting. It's just such a beautiful shot. I don't know, I just had to throw that in there. I know, I know, I know, but nothing with animation analysis, but this, it just, I don't know, one of those breaking my brain visually. Look at, look at how much the fingers are influenced. I mean, when he talks, right, you got the cheek moving and these are pressed against the face so when he talks look at the fingers look at that there's still a movement okay so i'm gonna switch over to actual animation analysis look at the slight rotation in the finger you can see there's a pressure point here because it moves a bit less but then you can see the change of the joint here absolutely amazing i love just details like that finger animation the squishiness all of that it's just really well done you can see how there's more movement of the pinky here as opposed to the other ones, just because there's more movement here through the jaw and then cheeks, and this rests on the cheek. Crazy time. Also, just generally a really, really nice sequence. Look at that. Just I'm going to frame this. Not that this was included, but since I still have that in my capture, the contrast of everybody listening, just the posing. You can see they all have just, they all are in a different, in a way, lean. Really nice. Just like a great display of just here, a bunch of characters, but. Make them look like they're really listening, except little turd. And different posing, the contrast, nice grouping of the fingers. Just really nice. Anyway, and this one is another one where you think in terms of body mechanics and what you could do, uh, especially when you know a student asks, so I use my next assignment, what should I do? And uh, you, if, you, if you watch my channel, you're probably so tired of this, but sets, I love sets. Just this door gives you the opportunity to do a walkout with a different type of move. Also, this would be your prop. In this case, it's alive, but it's a bit of a tiny weight thing, right? You can bring it down. Also, you can just add creature animation to your shot. But just that whole moment, there's a lot of complexity and interest in all of this. And this is why I feel like, imagine your shot, you can always make this closer in terms of framing. There's a lot you can show off. You have also a bit of an elevation change, just a little bit right there's so much complexity in all of this and then i love that like that goes back into 
lecture that I had about posing. Like this is not your rig. Like your rig comes in straight, arms up, T pose. And then a lot of people, a lot of people, it's very generalizing, it almost mean, but a lot of students, let's put it this way, right? A lot of beginner students just put those arms up or down, I should say. <laughs> arms are down and then they start animating. But that to me is, you go from a T pose where that's the rig default and you just bring it down and then you start animating, but that's not the character default. Imagine this is your character default. That is the constant attitude and relaxation of the character. That really nice line of action, just the body spine like this. And then you start animating. Then all of your acting choices have this as the main construct. I think that's just really, really great. You can see this as I'm scrubbing forward when the character is done. Look at that. This is a beautiful pose. And then you get into the reversal of this, right? For contrast, it's a funny pose there. And then look at that. It's a beautiful change. Look at the swivel of the feet. Look at that little slight hop there. And boop, 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 boop. And that little, hey, I stole this. The little accent there. Ding, ding, ding. See that little shake? And then the walk out. But again, with a slight lean back, because that's kind of the attitude of, for this character at this time. It's just so well done. So, so many things to talk about this. Besides, again, using just a simple prop with the door opening, just in terms of mechanics and complications. Also, this door frame then adds an opportunity for this character to lean like this. This is an immediate asymmetry in the posing, which is great. Also, talk about appreciation. Look at that face. Look at the shapes. Beautiful hand pose here. Slight detail. Look at that. Ever so slight movement in the fingers and the hands. <laughs> Look at that lighting, holy moly. But just that, like imagine this is your lip sync shot. Say, so, okay, what should I do? Well, Alpha, imagine you have, there's door frame, door frame, characters in front of it. You can put that slide over the shoulder, they have to feel, and this is the kind of character is talking, but they lean onto something. So again, immediate forced asymmetry. So that pose is already going to be more interesting than a default pose. And then you can do all kinds of stuff. Then you can play with subtext or maybe because this character is in this environment, you know, this character is outside. You can kind of play around with themes or whatever you want to do. But it's just, it's, hey, just the composition is great. I love all of this. Look at that little tongue animation. Like this is where I just get super excited of the choices. Look at the squishiness of the cheek going up. Just the, the squishiness in general. You can see a nice shape pushing that cheek up. It's just such fleshiness in this character. To me, super appealing mouth poses. You still have a slight curvature here. Love that. Look at the textures here and the geometry for that front. Look at that face. It's just so good. Character designs, the acting. So, so good. And then what I said before, again, we can continue here with even this here, right? That slight lean over there. Like if you have as a student a shot like this, and this is this is your lip sync between two characters. That's your one framing, and that's your other framing nice like that i mean obviously you know your lighting is going to be different and your texture is going to be different but that to me is just interesting and you can play up with this where one character is more relaxed like this with the hanging hand and maybe the other character is not like this but super straight and then you just play with also the shapes right skinnier tall straight maybe your character is really really tense and the other character is wider more relaxed and that's already really nice in terms of visual contrast but just as a whole this whole thing so so good and speaking of so so good I, i'm gonna end it with this and it's not completely the end of the shot because it's kind of long already i'm already in a really really long clip and i thought well I, let me just let me just end with something that's really 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 good and then i mean obviously there's a lot more that's really good but i have to stop at one point so this is a great moment be between him and uh the mother or you know at this point him and the mother and then her anyway in spoilers but there's a lot of really really great moments i love again subtleties look at her face so love this again that to me i love moments like these just tiny little changes in the shoulder you can see how they drop a bit but i love the lead with the eyebrows and then just that slight head rotation just that to me again i get so much satisfaction watching this just as the most complex the guy with the sign where everything stuff around i love them equally so great and then it pulls a little bit of a uh Hunt for October, where we switch between the voices from the cat to now it's talking. Where technically this cat will be always talking, wait, and then the guy talks. But anyway, you don't want to think about that too much. And there are a lot of things that I love about this. There are two moments just from timing and acting wise that I really, really love. And then also 
where I'm just a big fan of characters in general just acting. And the framing is like this, but look at his arms, ready? There is still stuff going on and it's off screen. And at one point you can see, you can just see a little bit of the hand coming. I think it's a bit later on. Let me scrub forward. It's right there. Look at that. Let me just go back. Just this. You know the animator still pulls out all the fingers. But this to me just feels really nice. Again, it's just I love, don't get me wrong, I love animation, I love cartooniness and, and you know crazy style and everything and nice silhouettes and everything. I love all that. At the same time, I also love more naturalistic stuff where even though it can be pushed and stylized and cartoony, this is the acting and it happens to be framed like this, where we just happen to catch a glimpse of this, but you feel it, you can see that are moving. You know what's going on down there. It's just so nicely done. But let me just go back. That's what I want to end with this. This whole sequence, there's just so much awesomeness. Even this, that slight complexity of all this here, right? The listening, up, straightening, it's great. But love that, love that little... <sighs> the weight of this, the shoulders, the arms dropping here, and you can see the constant change in posture throughout. It's also great when you have something that's kind of closed off that you can hide off technically a uh, kind of twinning. I mean, this movie is full of twinning. With 22 and him, they twin all the time. And it doesn't really matter. As a teacher, you know, you, just, you always have to tell your students avoid twinning and think about asymmetry. But if you look at movies, there's twinning there all the time. And it's really not massive, a big deal. But anyway, let me go back to this here. It's the contrast between the two. But here's that move. Ready? I don't know why I love this. Maybe it's a bit more naturalistic and it's a bit maybe based more on reference, but the look over and how he leads with the head and then brings those arms up. But again, this, this is like even the subtle asymmetry that I love there, right? And then he got that beautiful hand poses and how he gets back into this. And it's not, I look at this, the rhythm of those arms up and down and then into the step. Let's watch this in real time again. Head lead, over, and then that. Oh, it's just so good. Again, we're going back into a bit more twinning there. And then into this. Love all this. Again, it's a long shot. So there's a lot of work there. But you can see the rhythm in the body, how there's some holds. Down, sharper moments, holds. More relaxation. Oh, look at her walk, too. You can see the hips. Also, it's great character design face, eyebrows. Oh, there's so much good stuff. This is the second one, right? To me, it's like that moment. Love it. Love the timing. It just feels really good. Second one is this one. That move over and that quick release. Ready, ready, ready. And and <laughs> arm up. I can watch this all the time. It's just great. I love the timing. And just the acting choice of going up there and almost there and then moving back. So great. Yeah, I don't know. I can go through this and just silently love everything. But you can go through this. This is for you. And even just take this, right? Just in terms of the shapes, the lips, the squishiness, the corner arcs, leads with eyebrows. I mean, as a student, I would just take her. Every shot with her, just do what I do, capture the whole thing, and just go frame by frame. Look at the grouping of the fingers. But this is tough because they're skinny fingers. Potentially with a bit of a gap there to make these not super spindly. There's still a lot of... Look at that. Look at this pose. Love all this. Oh, squishiness of this. Look at that, how the mouth goes up. It's like compression here. But you can see a little bit of here and in the nose. And then you got the straightening here. Slight, slight move of the lids. Come on, you can go this frame by frame. And it's just insane. I love this. I know this gets me so pumped. But this is a really, really long sequence. I highly recommend you watch the whole thing because there's just so many great moments. This is what I said before. The acting that's off screen. We, we watch this. We look at this. But we, we, we kind of see it. We feel it. And I love that about that sequence. I love how those both of those characters act. They keep having it. all of that, right? It just happens to quickly get into frame. 
I love that. I feel like in movies, it's more and more used. Also love this here. Just an acting choice of that. It's just so great. And again, I'm going to end it with this because there's a lot more. I think it's like another half an hour into the movie. That's great stuff. What I have to kind of stop, what is this? 45 minutes in my timer by the time I edit. May probably 45 minutes. This is really long. So I'm going to play this. And if you have watched until the very end, you are very, very patient. And I'm going to end this on one of my favorite moments. I mean, there's so many in there. But anyway, this is so great. So thank you for watching. I hope that this was helpful and, and you were patient enough listening to me geeking out about moments. Also, by the way, you can see how the character starts to go. Look at this. A little squishiness in the cheeks to move over as a lead up into this. It's great. I know this sounds simple, but I love all this. Basically, I love animation. This is what it comes down to. Beautiful hand pose visually. It's more like a triangle simplified. It's great. So many great moments. Also, by the way, if you keep watching this, look at this. They're still there. And when the cat was talking at the beginning. There's also a moment where there's still a slight move in the paw where there's still accents and moves you can see this here just when this moves anyway a lot of ton of stuff i love this it's really there's so much great animation in this movie i highly recommend that you watch it um you know capture those things go frame by frame learn from it it's really really impressive work so that's it i'll leave it with that thank you for watching if you like this you know the spiel at the end like and subscribe all that good stuff but who cares i care about this movie and it's just really really great so thank you for watching thank you to all of the people who have animated this and and uh, made that movie happen it's just it's just a joy to analyze this and and to be humbled <laughs> by all the work and the quality of this so thank you to everybody and that's it i will see you or you can listen to me whatever in my next upload